Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Seven Surefire Ways to Improve ROI. I see all of you in the chat commenting where you're from. Welcome to those of you from Maryland to Tennessee, North Carolina, Colorado. My name is Stacy Hatch, and I am a product marketing manager at Weave, and I will be leading today's webinar. I have to especially shout out those people from Maryland because I am originally from Maryland and it is a fantastic state. Thank you all for joining. I'm excited to lead today's webinar and to get your feedback and comments as we go through and learn ways that your practice or your business can improve your ROI. So just a high level snapshot of the seven things we'll be talking about today. The first is learning the business side of medicine or whatever technical uh, skill you may have. Second, focusing on your social media. <laughs> Team Crab Claw, absolutely. Uh, second, focusing on your social media accounts. Third, developing an email marketing strategy. Fourth, using digital forms. Fifth, connecting with your customers via text messages. Sixth, asking your clients for online reviews. And seventh, building deeper relationships with your clientele. So let's go ahead and jump in. Learning the business side of medicine. It is definitely a delicate uh, balance to both practice medicine or perform technical work and simultaneously run your business. But it's really important that you take the time to learn some core business principles to ensure the success of your business. We see that 78% of practices right now are seeing this opportunity to grow their client base, but aren't necessarily sure how to go about doing that. So what can you and what should you be doing? Uh, perhaps set some monthly goals to learn more about some different areas of your business. Uh, one goal might be to attend a webinar monthly. If so, check. Congratulations. This is a fantastic first step in that goal. Uh, another thing might be to subscribe to some different industry newsletters. You're probably already subscribed to industry newsletters in your, in your specific skill set, maybe a dental or a vet newsletter. Uh, maybe add a marketing newsletter to that. I subscribe to something called The Click, uh, and um, it's a fantastic way for me to stay up to date on different marketing trends in the industry. Or you could perhaps listen to a podcast episode weekly, um, but just set aside that time to build a basic understanding of core business principles, as it will help you learn how to more effectively run your business, and then also how to more effectively hire people who can do that day-to-day -day office work for you. An office manager, if you're on this call, you, you should know that that is a lifesaver uh, to handle your day-to-day -day operations and a fantastic staff um, to help make sure that your business runs smoothly and profitably. Have a quick poll for everyone on the call. We're going to open this up and would love your feedback and responses. Uh, it will be anonymous, of course. And then once everyone has had an opportunity to submit their responses, we will go ahead and share those results and kind of review some of the statistics we're seeing. So today's first poll question is, do you have a business social media account? And we will go ahead and share this poll and would love your answers here. Answer choices being yes, I have one and I post regularly. Yes, I have one, but I don't use it. No, I don't have one. Or finally, I am too scared to have a social media account and no shame in that, but go ahead and submit your answers here. We'll give about 15 seconds to submit answers and then we will share results. Okay, about five more seconds. Go ahead and lock in your answers. Awesome. It is looking like we have a good chunk of people who have a social media account and post regularly. About 66. Oh, it just went up to 71%. Uh, and then a group of you who have a social media account, but don't use it. I have to applaud you uh, because this is fantastic. This is some of the best numbers that I have seen as far as people who have a social media account. Um, and so if you do, we're going to give you a few tips and tricks uh, to continue to build your online presence. 
Uh, and then if you are not using currently your social media account, we'll give you some tips and tricks that will make it easier to post regularly and share content. Go ahead and share my screen again. We'll get back to these slides to dive into some tips and tricks. Okay, social media tips and tricks. First up is to post regularly. This seems like a no brainer, but what does that mean? What does that look like? This means that you should be posting two to three times per week on your social media feed. Um, and the best optimal time for engagement to post is typically weekdays between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Central Time. The second is to create a calendar and then content buckets. This is something that can really help to simplify your social media management and make it easier to post regularly. So make a calendar and set aside time the prior month to plan out next month and also set aside time to gather content for that next month. So when that next month arrives, you have plug and play content uh, to put out regularly on social media. And then also uh, sit down with the people in your business and determine the content buckets um, that you want for your business and what percentage of a content pie, if you will, those content buckets should be. So for example, if you're on the call and you are a dentist, uh, I might recommend that 20% of your content should be promotional content. And that might be 15% off teeth whitening. And then 45% of your content should fall under a educational bucket. And this might look like Q and A's, industry news, um, talk with the doctor, product highlights, and then maybe 20% of your content falls under a connection content bucket. This meaning staff spotlights, behind the scenes, talking about community events that you're involved in. And then 15% could fall into your customer content bucket. So testimonials uh, and spotlights of customer stories. Number three, engaging with comments. This one is so important. Respond and engage with every comment that you receive on a social media post. Not only does it show that you appreciate and care about the time it took for someone to leave that comment on your post, but also it provides social proof to those prospects who may be checking you out on your social media page. Uh, also, the more comments and engagement you have on a post, the more likely it will be to be shown on more of your followers, um, your followers' feeds. It also helps you to show up as a top post when someone is looking um, under branded hashtags. So respond to all comments. Fourth, fill in your business info. This one is important and is one that can kind of be forgotten um, about, uh, but fill in your address, fill in your contact info. Pay attention to the category you're selecting for your business to fall into. And definitely make sure you're including a link to your business website because the interaction with social media links can actually improve uh, your website's search ranking. Five, use relevant industry hashtags. Um, so hashtags are a way that you can reach a much broader audience with your content as people are able to search particular hashtags rather than just going to your account. You're able to see it on a kind of discover page. Instagram right now allows for 30 hashtags, but the sweet spot research shows is about 11 hashtags per post. And there is a strategy as far as picking those hashtags for best engagement. So if you are on the call and you are a med spa owner, you should start with the most popular and common uh, hashtags in your space and pick a few of those. For example, hashtag med spa, and then take it one level deeper and pick things that are a little bit more niche. So maybe you could focus on the geographic location of your practice. So hashtag New York Med Spa. And then you'll take it one level, level deeper, deeper and pick a few hashtags that are content specific that match whatever the content pieces you're putting out. So if you're putting out a post about tips and tricks for how you can survive post Botox, perhaps pick a few hashtags like post Botox care uh, or Botox tips. And then of course, make sure to include a branded hashtag um, with kind of your company name or whatever it is that you guys um, have branded on. So hashtag beauty bar, for example. Um, 
And hashtags are fantastic to reach this larger audience, but often an eyesore. So just a little tip, um, if you want to hide those in your caption, just return space down three times, and that will hide any hashtags that you put in um, from your caption under a see more click through option. And then finally, number six, utilizing stories. Uh, so stories are content that shows up at the top of your Facebook or Instagram feed and uh, disappears after about 24 hours. And what's awesome about Instagram stories or Facebook stories is they have a higher engagement rate than traditional posts. And they're also shown to more followers. And so this is a great way to hack kind of an Instagram algorithm where if you post something in your feed, you can link out to your story. And then as people are engaging with your um, post via your story, it indicates to Instagram that more people want to see and engage with your content. You're also able to post more regularly to your stories as opposed to the two to three times per week in feed posts, you can be posting daily to your Instagram story and should. It's a great way to repost customer content as well. And utilize video because 96% of people feel that video is important and valuable in making a purchasing decision. Okay. Number three, developing your email marketing strategy. Emails generate $38 of new business for every $1 spent. So how can you ensure that you're maximizing your ROI with this email marketing strategy? I would definitely recommend developing a brand style guide. This might include colors, tone of voice, logo parameters. This will just help with consistency um, with all communication, not even just email marketing, consistency with what you're putting across on social media as well. Uh, consider the cadence of sends. We recommend that you're sending emails out about four times per month, but this really comes down to quality versus quantity. Uh, if you don't have the content to build out four emails, that's okay. Scale it back and just send two because you want to not be hounding your customers with invalu invaluable content, but instead be a, a source that they will open your email and look to um, for education there. Pay attention to unsubscribes. That can be a good indicator as well of if you're sending out too many emails, you're getting a lot of unsubscribes, maybe scale back in the cadence of your sends. Uh, it's also email marketing is a fantastic way to send out some more relatable content. I would suggest considering a monthly uh, or a quarterly newsletter. This could just be a longer piece of content that gives more of a behind the scenes into your practice or your business. So use that as an opportunity to spotlight some of your staff, to spotlight community events. Um, also to talk about maybe a new product that you're offering and why it's important for your customers. And then promotions are also fantastic over email marketing. My caution simply would be to limit the number of promotional emails you're sending out to keep that uh, under 20% and match that up to your social calendar as well. You just want to avoid driving a discount culture, if you will, where customers are only coming to engage with you to buy product or services when you're running a promotion. Uh, and then also list buying. If you're looking to reach uh, a larger audience, uh, list buying might be an option for you. I would just, again, a caution there. Um, certain email providers have email sending rules uh, where you're unable to send to a bot list as they haven't opted in. So before you go and buy an email list to reach more people, uh, make sure your email provider allows you to send that out. And Weave actually has an email marketing tool that is very simple and easy to use with some pre-built templates and also the ability to customize and save your own templates for future use. Make sure you're adding a call to action to every single one of your uh, emails so it gives prospective clients and customers an opportunity to engage with your content. And also, don't be afraid to switch up your email marketing strategy, what worked six months ago, may not be what's working today. And something great to do would be uh, run an A-B test. So see what content performs better, see what images perform better, see what promotions uh, perform better between two emails you send out, and then lean into what is working for your business to maximize your ROI. Number four, utilizing digital forms. 
So giving your customers a frictionless experience plays a critical role in building their brand loyalty, uh, keeping up with retention, and then by nature, increasing your recurring revenue. And friction is anything in a customer's journey uh, that keeps them from moving through your conversion funnel, anything that makes it more difficult or makes that process more painful. And paper forms can definitely be a point of friction for customers, but not only a point of friction for customers, but also your staff. And so digital forms help to combat this uh, by ensuring that any information in a form that's submitted is complete. So your staff isn't wasting their time tracking down someone who's missing information or the people who have some illegible handwriting, tracking them down to clarify or wasting time scanning and uploading to a PMS or a system of record to have that information. Digital Forms modernizes your business, modernizes your practice and eliminates the headache for your customers and your staff. Weave also has a digital forms offering. I won't go too much into it, uh, but if you have any interest, you can request a demo or like chat in the comments and we can send more information your way about digital forms. Okay, time for another quick poll. Thank you for your responses on the first question. Uh, this next question is super simple. I'm going to go ahead and open. Let me stop sharing my screen and open. This next poll, I would love to know, do you use text messaging for your business? Yes, no, sorta. We'll give you about 15 seconds to lock in your answers and then we will talk about it. Again, do you use text messaging for your business? I love to see the 100% for yes, because texting is so critical for the success of a business. Okay, I jinxed it. There's one no, that's okay, no shame. We'll give about five more seconds to lock in your responses. Okay, awesome. So we're seeing about 93% of you who are utilizing text messaging for your business and about 7% of you who are not currently using text messaging in your business. Uh, another applause for all of you here on the phone um, because we actually see, let me go ahead and reshare my slides. We actually see that only 43% of healthcare practices are using text messaging to connect with their clients. And I know we probably do have a lot of Weave customers here on the call. Uh, and so I'm so glad that you guys are utilizing text messaging in your business. Uh, if you're not, now is the time because text messages you see have a 98% open rate. So compare that to email marketing, which we were just talking about. We see between a 15 and a 30% open rate as good by industry standards uh, for email marketing. Um, so what should you be doing with your text messaging to improve your ROI? First, use it to be sending out those automated appointment reminders for existing appointments. This way you can ensure or at least cut down on last minute cancellations and no show appointments. But beyond that, use it to set up automated recall reminders uh, so that you can remind patients, customers that they're due for an upcoming appointment. Perhaps they're due for a dental cleaning or their next pest control appointment. Their lawn needs to be sprayed. It's been six months. Uh, they had Botox six months ago, and now they should come in for another round or another round of pet vaccinations. Whatever it might be, it's fantastic to be able to set and forget uh, these recall reminders to ensure that patients and customers can schedule themselves. And you're bringing in that recurring revenue without having to do much. It's a very small lift um, on your end, which is awesome. You should also kind of look to quick fill lists. This is something that we have at Weave to help with those um, no-show last minute type cancellation appointments where you can add customers or patients to a quick fill list. And when you do have a last minute cancellation, you can send out texts to those people on your quick fill list who need to come in for an appointment. And make sure that you're not leaving any slot unfilled in your schedule and missing out on, on that additional revenue. 
Use a business line when you're texting. Don't use your personal phone number. Again, this is something with Weave um, that our customers, one of the favorite things that they love the most is that any text from Weave goes out from your office phone number rather than your personal line. And so you're not sifting through late at night um, messages saying, is this personal or is this work? Uh, we Everything goes through your office phone number. And then automatically responding to missed calls with a text. So a lot of you may struggle with high call volumes at your practice, at your clinic, at your office. Um, and so Weave offers a missed call text feature that automatically sends a text when a call is missed to a client saying, hey, we're sorry we missed that call. How can we help? And so you're not leaving any opportunity unclosed or open and can bring in that additional revenue that way. Texting is just a great example of kind of meeting your customers where they're at. I had a conversation with a doctor a few months ago and we were talking about how she has a few patients that really don't like to share much about their health details or their stories in person or on the phone, but she's able to get them to open up via text able to better serve their needs um, and build kind of that loyalty and relationship with them through texting. Okay. Number six, asking clients for reviews. So reviews are powerful, you guys. It shouldn't come as any surprise. Uh, these numbers will just reiterate the fact that getting client reviews is essential, essential um, for improving the ROI of your business. 92% of customers now look at online reviews when considering a business. 79% of customers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. This one is huge. Before we had Google, before we had Facebook reviews, what would you do? You would go and ask a friend, ask a coworker and say, who is your vet? Who do you use for pest control? Who's your dentist? Do you recommend them? And then often and likely, you would go based on that personal recommendation from a friend. And now 79% of customers are trusting the random online reviewer as much as that personal recommendation. And then 73% of consumers only pay attention to reviews written in the last month. This is huge. There's a big recency bias um, on reviews. So if you have 3000 reviews for your business, that is fantastic. But if that last review was back in 2019, then it's time to kind of get out and get soliciting to get more reviews because recency matters. Reviews is a game of consistency. So I want to give you a few tips and tricks for reviews. The first being, of course, respond. Respond to every review you get, whether it is positive or negative and respond hopefully within 24 hours. We usually see the best businesses are responding to their reviews within 24 to 48 hours of receiving that review. Also reply directly uh, where that review was received and always say thank you because it did take time for someone to leave you a review. Mention the name of your business in the review. Only if it is a good review, that is the caveat uh, because Google goes ahead and part of their algorithm associates your business name with the positive mention in a review. And so if a review is negative, do not respond with your business name in that review. Uh, and then also respond to specific points that maybe are mentioned in the review. This can help tie your business name with the products and services that you offer. The second being ask to utilize those reviews, get permission to use those reviews in marketing efforts. Um, if you can, it's great to do this personally as it allows for some follow-up questions on the experience your customers are having with your business, what's working, what isn't working, and just also as an additional touch point with the customer to build that loyalty and kind of brand recognition there. And then three, you have the review, you have the permission to use the review, utilize the review in your marketing, particularly in your landing page on your website. Uh, I love to see somewhere featured on the home page of a website, actual customer reviews, because as we saw, 92% of people are looking at reviews before they make a purchasing decision, and 79% are trusting as much as a recommendation from a friend. So make sure you're giving space to highlight those fantastic reviews 
and where you can, where it's appropriate, use pictures. Um, show the actual story of the customer uh, in addition to the words that they're saying in their review. I have to, oh, before I go on, I do have to give a quick teaser to any Weave customers who are on the call about some new reviews functionality that will be coming out to you in the next week or two. It's called Reviews Analytics. Uh, this will provide a dashboard um, that will give you insight into the online health of your reputation and also give um, some action items, some graphs and charts that you can actually act upon and that will measure some of the things that we just talked about. So a reviews reply trend line, making sure that you are replying to all reviews, a uh, time to reply so that you can track if you're responding in that 24 to 48 hour window, um, and even invitations, review reply invitations sent. Uh, so you can make sure that you are gathering recent reviews and not just relying on your old reviews. So look out, just a teaser for an announcement of that in the next week or two. And then finally, building relationships with your clientele. So top-notch client care means getting to know your clients and then catering to their specific needs and preferences. To reiterate what we've previously touched on, it's important to be relatable and accessible, uh, and that can come with regular and open communication with your customers. So a reminder to really consider a newsletter that shows the behind the scenes, um, that gives a little bit more information on your staff let them get to know you, let them get to know your staff so they feel connected and loyal to your business and take that relationship away from being just simply transactional. Um, also take time to train your staff to be friendly and to engage with your customers, recognize when to speak and engage, and also maybe the times um, to be silent when customers or clients may not want to talk. And then it's also really important to recognize that your relationship with your clientele begins before they ever walk in your door. As we just learned with reviews, people are looking to reviews before they ever choose um, your business. And so it's important to have relationships, positive relationships with your current clientele and garner those reviews to start building your online reputation as a touch point for future customers. And 68% of practices say that the best way to drive positive patient reviews is personalized service from front office staff. So in those trainings, um, consider talking about the culture of your company, consider drafting up maybe some practice phone scripts or practice scenarios, and work through what those customer touch points and engagement should look like so you're providing the best experience. If you are new to Weave on this call and are just learning about Weave, uh, we do believe that we offer uh, wonderful solutions to help you improve um, your business's ROI. As we talked about, we have missed call text to help manage high call volumes. Uh, we have VoIP phones, reviews, online scheduling, basically taking a lot of different um, point solutions and bringing them together in one easy to use customer engagement and uh, communication platform. If you have any interest, there is a request we've demo a uh, video on or call to action button on your screen and you can go ahead and click that or make a note in the Q&A and we will get you connected with a member of our sales team. With that being said, thank you all for joining and we can take a few minutes um, to do some Q&A. So if you have any questions, drop them in the Q&A section or in the chat section. I also have to call out that someone on here is from Iran. Welcome and thank you for being here. You may win as far as furthest person to join today's webinar. Okay. Any questions want to come through? Do digital forms integrate with MindBody? It's for you to utilize any website plugins. My body, everything you're visiting. To my understanding, digital forms does not yet integrate with um, mind body, but that may be one that's in the works. Uh, there are a lot of forms, write backs, um, and integrations being built right now. 
We just launched a new version of Weave Digital Forms. We can check and get back with you, Alyssa, there. Let's see. Chatbot says, we've utilized any website plugins. Uh, so we do have what's called right now Web Assistant or online scheduling. And so yes, uh, Web Assistant would be the tool for you to use as a kind of chatbot on your website. If you want an example of what that looks like, you can actually go ahead and look at the getweave.com website. Um, we kind of use that to engage with people who, who hop onto our website. Can I go over the percentage of content buckets again? Yes, absolutely. So with content buckets, um, the example I gave was for dentists in particular, but honestly, it probably works for whatever vertical uh, your business might be in. And so a great recommendation that I use is 20% of your content could be promotional content. And so it might be 15% off teeth whitening. Um, or whatever promotion your business is running. Again, keep that promotional content about under that 20% mark. 45% of your content could fall under the educational content bucket. And so that would look like question and answer, product highlights, industry news. 20% um, falling under a connection bucket. Um, so showing your staff highlights, staff spotlights, behind the scenes, talking about community events, and then 15% being customer focused. So spotlighting customers um, and doing testimonials. Hopefully that helps. It really does make it so easy uh, because then you know the content you're looking to gather for the next month. Okay, checking. I think we are about out of time but I will see any work on improving your email marketing templates. That is a fantastic question. And I understand uh, this is one that we, an answer that we get a lot as far as updating some of those email templates. And it is um, something that is being discussed. Don't have a timeline for you, but if you have any feedback, we would love to hear it. You can submit your feedback through Weave and let us know what templates you are looking for. And we can look to build, um, build some more of those out. Thanks for the comment. When is the cutoff for Weave discontinuing support for M consent? That's a fantastic question. I don't know the exact timeline. I do know that um, we are in the process of that migration. I believe that migration is going through the end of the year. Uh, but Nikki, we will take your information down and shoot you a note as soon as we confirm for sure what that date for cutoff might be. And I think that's all we have time for today. I know we're a few minutes over the, the time slot for this webinar. Um, for any unanswered questions, we will again take your information down and make sure we reach out to you with a response. I want to thank you all so much for joining and for your participation. And hopefully you can take a nugget or two away from this on things you can start implementing in your practice or in your business that will help you improve your ROI right away. If you have any questions, you can also um, reach out to us at Weave or to me, Stacey Hatch, at Weave as well. Thank you guys so much for joining. We will talk to you later.